Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog on a bright and early, albeit nippy, Monday morning. We've come in this morning with several tasks on my mind and uh, when I got here I realised that I'd already started several the previous week so I think it would be a wise decision to put them to bed in a particular order. So we've got floor painting to do, plumbing work to do, extensions to the waste and the mains feed up here for uh, water for the pilot kit. We've got pipe insulation to do because the winter is on its way and we've got floor repairs to do, cracks in the concrete. So all of these jobs need to be done in a particular order so I think what I'm going to do is start on the floor first incrementally in patches and then what I can do then is let the whole thing dry while we move on to another job and then maybe when it's dry we do the plumbing. There's no point doing the plumbing first and then having a completely wet floor to try and paint. So that's my thought process and one of the reasons why I'm painting is because the chemicals that we're using for cleaning is starting to lift the last layer that we put down and I wasn't really a big fan of that polyurethane paint that we bought. A massive tin it was about six months ago you might remember. So I've gone back to the good old trusty Leyland which Chance is looking after for me aren't you buddy? And he's already geared up for a game of football. Not been here two minutes and he wants to play football. Ball? 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 Get your ball Chance. <laughs> I told you. He loves it. And there's all sorts of stuff to do up here as well. I've got to put a load of tackle away. I've got to get that compressor out to pump up the tyres on the car. They're a bit low. All oh, this wall and stuff wants painting as well, but it's not something I want to get stuck into right away. Toilet needs painting. Main door needs painting. There's lots of jobs that I can do maintenance wise while the tanks are full of beer. And while these ones are empty, I'm also going to pull them away so I can get to the floor underneath, paint right up to the back edge. The damp proofing that we put on the back wall, that black layer, has worked fantastically well. So uh, we're going to take the floor paint up to that and inspect it while we're there. I have to be careful with the knee, make sure that I don't hurt myself doing this job. And then something else I want to do is revisit the heating systems on these tanks. Whilst the under blankets work for maintaining temperature in the fermenters, they don't allow me to raise the temperature and I'd like the ability to do a diacetyl rest at some point during the fermentation process, particularly if next year I want to have a little bit of a play with brewing some lagers or two. So we'll pull these tanks forward as well. It's just a case of disconnecting four or five pipes and the cables are all daisy chained anyway, so that's not a problem. And then in between jobs, if there's such a thing, I can tidy up a bit of mess from last week. Uh, I put in this panel meter just here to observe voltages and everything else on the big kit, but we need some different types of um, current transformer in there. That's got the wrong current transformer in. So we're gonna have to wait until they arrive from China. And then, yeah, I really should start to tidy up the workbench area here and maybe even get some of these installed. We've got several of these ready to be exchanged for the valves that we've got on the existing kit and I've been taking them apart to have a look how they're built and they're quite interesting actually. They're completely different to the other green or blue um, motors that we've been using. I don't know if I've got one knocking around, I don't think so. But you can see that this one operates via a relatively small circuit board which does the thinking and the switching. I've got two micro switches on there. 
as you can see and um, basically when you switch the polarity so this is your negative rail what would be known as the earth for us um, if you switch the positive rail between the red and the blue then that either makes this stepper motor rotate in one direction or the other and uh, when it reaches a certain position these lugs on this section of the um, output shaft hit the uh, micro switches thus stopping the movement it's the end of travel it's telling uh, telling this I think they're just latching switches and then that breaks the circuit so they stop moving very simple design but what I like about them is if the back boxes or the stepper motors fail which I don't think they will stepper motors are pretty they're bulletproof but uh, if they do fail just change the box out very very simple design and one that I like we've also got to do some um, maintenance in the pub as well we've got some door handles to order and to change and lots and lots of paint to touch up and this is what we're going to be using to remove the paint from the brewery floor so we can get a nice flat surface to apply our uh, paint to I'm also going to give the concrete a bit of an acid wash as well before I paint it so it will be getting wet at some point and if that is the case I might just at the same time dive in and do the plumbing work while I can so this week is going to be one of those weeks where we do all sorts of different jobs every day and I don't know which order it's going to be happening in I also need to address the thermoprobes on the pilot kit come to think of it I know Tom's having a few issues with his and I think it's because we've extended the cables and I think it's because it's the first time we're using Inkbird PIDs and we just have to get used to how they perform and I'll be putting the first plum porter on top of some frozen plums all in a day's work at Harrison's Brewery and that right boy bring it bring your ball then bring it Bonjour. Bonjour. No, you come for a game of football no, not today. Oh shit. All the tanks have been moved, all the floor has been washed to get rid of any grease and brewing stains, uh, any sugars or anything like that. And you can see where we're going to finish up, just across there and down. So basically it's the brewing area and the three uh, original FVs that are going to get, or well, the floor underneath those are going to get the big treatment to make sure that it's all nice and sanitary hygienic floor if you like there are the tanks everything's in the corner we've got a few bits on the floor here well, you can see how clean the elements come out after CIP I haven't hit these at all with um, any wire brushes or anything this is just simply the chemicals they are spotless we can of course though see there's a little bit of um, hardness build up, calcium build up on the HLT element. So we'll be giving that treatment with acid before it goes back into the tank. Now what I'm going to do to clean up patches such as this. So that section there, this section here, and then this long crack running all the way down to the soak away if you like and the soakaway itself they all need kind of repairing we've got a few divots as well you can see where there's water actually collected in there a few other places 
that need a little bit of repair work doing to them. So, you don't often see me do this, but I put a guard on a grinder because we're going to be wearing this steel brush around at, I don't know, two and a half thousand RPM, something like that, 11,000. Yeah, 11,000 RPM, so these little bits of wire can fly off and will really hurt, so we're going with the thick Lincoln electric gloves that Froggy bought me. I've got my welding jacket on, the, uh, the thick kind of cottony thing, and we're going to be wearing a mask as well. Full protection for this setup, and I'm just going to go and hit all the ragged paint, such as this section here, you see how it's kind of kind of lifting but still attached well I don't want to just paint over that because it's just going to compound the issue then once we've done all this oh, that looks like it's bubbled as well Look, it has it's bubbled up underneath so once we've done all that and we've got all these bits off I'm then going to tip some acid this bucket's full of acid we're going to acid wash the concrete to uh, give us a key and to get rid of any powdery residue on the surface then we're going to let that dry as we repair the cracks and then tomorrow possibly we will be painting with the Leyland. Alright Chancy boy. Oh my god. I've never been so stiff in my life. Don't tell Gemma that though. So I've been literally bent double doing this because I can't kneel down. I've tried sitting on that and scooching around and yeah, kneeling on the good knee on a pad there but now the best way to do it is just to bend over double and it really hurts the back but as you can see it definitely has if you look at that to that it's definitely scratched it up maybe that's not the best angle with the light there you go you can see any flaky paint or bubbles of paint like down there all been scratched away so I've still got quite a bit to go but I'm just going to rinse this down to see what it looks like so far before I progress further up to here so I'm thinking like the paint under here is fine I'm not gonna have to scrap that thank God save my back but places like this which do have little patches on are gonna want doing same here so yeah, quick rinse down with a hose pipe and we'll have a look exactly what it looks like. That thing is a beast. Only thing is, I reckon we ain't got much left because I've worn down, well, 60% of the bristles on it now. So it certainly ain't gonna do the whole floor for me. Uh, but we might just have enough juice in it if I attack the worst spots. We do have the other one, which I don't think I opened, but it's a softer wire. It's basically like a wire brush, and I don't think it's gonna have the minerals. Whereas that twisted one, those twisted wire spools, definitely had a lot more bite to them. So yeah, because the floor was damp, we've not got any dust issues or anything like that. It was a good idea actually to wash the floor down in the first instance and now we'll just rinse it all off. the grinder it's been cleaned and now we're just hitting the exposed concrete with the brick and patio cleaner also known as uh, hydrochloric acid I believe and uh, the idea behind this is it destroys the surface layer 
on the concrete and gets rid of any dusty surface, if you know what I mean. So that allows the paint or sealer or whatever we put on there to make a mechanical bond to the concrete. And of course, it's cleaning as well. It will be getting rid of any dust, maybe any grease. Well, I don't think there's any grease left over, frankly. This floor has had a rigorous cleaning. If I'd have done this in the first place when we moved in, maybe I wouldn't have to do it now. But you live and learn. So you can see that the uh, the acid is foaming a little bit. Not much, but it is a little bit. And that means that it's reacting with the cement or the concrete. Um, and very quickly it'll become neutralised because of the carbon that's in the concrete and then we'll just rinse it off down the drain and then when this is dry tomorrow then we'll come back and we'll fill all of the crevices or I might do that today before we leave actually because you need to do that when it's still damp and then tomorrow we'll paint when it's all dried so I'm going to mix up a little bit of slurry once I finish this acid wash and we'll use that to fill any gaps. Right, so I've just taken the vacuum to the floor and the idea behind this is to remove any puddles of water, bits of grit that didn't get washed away with the cleaning and all that kind of jazz. Uh, it's a wet and dry vac so it's not been a problem. So now we've cleared up any puddles in the cracks and crevices that we want to fill, we're going to go ahead and make a tanking slurry or a bonding slurry. So the idea behind this little mix is uh, a video that I saw by Steve the Pool Guy on YouTube and my thought process was, well if anyone's going to be making waterproof repairs to concrete, it's going to be somebody who repairs concrete swimming pools. So in here I've just got ordinary Portland cement and we're going to mix this up to a paintable slurry because we're going to paint this on and once we've got this looking something like we're going to add a big dollop of PVA adhesive just regular polyvinyl acetate I think it is so we'll just mix this up I don't need a lot because I have got a lot to paint. There we go, it's pretty thick, we want it like, almost like whipping cream. There we go. Probably better off using a flat bottom towel. behind this is it creates a seal, a, a bond that can uh, bond between the old concrete and the new concrete or self-leveling compound which is what we're going to be using in our case. that a little bit more and then we'll be ready to paint that onto the surface and then we're going to take the old tanking slurry and we're just going to paint it into the cracks we're not going to spread it out like paint but we're just going to make sure that all the surfaces are covered in it and this will give us a good bond when we come to pour the uh, self leveling or whatever other filler that you've got going into the hole. Then the next step what I'm mixing here, as you can probably tell if you've used it before, 
is some self-leveling compound. And I'm going to pour this on top of the repairs while it's still tacky. While that sleeping compound is still tacky. That's the plan. And then this should set up for us tomorrow morning. No cracks. Fully bonded. Level. Ready to paint. tool to apply it to be fair. And that is the compound down. So that's really as far as we can go today. It's getting late anyway. So I filled all the cracks and crevices and then here I basically just tipped out the bucket for an experiment. This is all kind of pitted if you know what I mean. So it's really quite difficult to run a squeegee over the top of it. It leaves uh, lots of tiny little puddles behind, like fingernail sized puddles everywhere. So I thought on that section, it's got no tanking slurry. I'll just pour the self leveling out and we'll see what happens. If it's no good, I can just hit it again with the uh, old bristles there and uh, get that off. But if it fills the holes and makes life a lot easier for us, bingo, I might even mix more up and tip it over the whole freaking surface and just have done with it and let it level itself out because that is less than a millimetre thick. So if that will bond, then that means we can move forward with uh, some of the other areas that aren't so good. In particular, places like here. So it's difficult to see well you can actually make it out on the camera you see all those lumps and bumps some of them are pretty deep and running pallet trucks and stuff over them uh, it doesn't bode well frankly and it's also really difficult to paint you can't just roller it and it's difficult to clean you can't just squeegee it because of all these little pits and holes and whatever else there so if we can get this sorted by pouring that stuff on all the better for us, but we shall see tomorrow. So I'm going to get the dog from upstairs, walking carefully through the maze of patches and chuck him in the back of the car and go home. He's not having a walk tonight because it's raining. Uh, so all I'm going to do is sit down, catch up on editing because there's a few videos where well, you've probably seen them by now, but uh, that's the job for tonight. And we'll catch you on tomorrow's vlog. Hopefully uh, the weather's a bit better we could do with some sunshine. We want drying weather for this kind of stuff, don't we? We'll see you then.